This film is brought to you by New York Life and its over 10,000 agents and representatives who offer you quality financial products and services to help you get the most out of life. January 17, 1988, Washington's RFK Stadium, the threshold of a dream for the Minnesota Vikings. A dream which began four months earlier in the comfort of a Metrodome and survived through one of the strangest yet most fulfilling seasons in the team's history. It was a season which was jump-started by electricity, marked by comeback victories in each of the first two weeks. From Anthony Carter's initial airstrike of the season to Hassan Jones' last-minute game winner the following week, the Vikings appeared to be off and running to a promising 1987. But the rest of the season wasn't quite so easy. A player strike so head coach Jerry Burns endure an 0-3 record with a squad of replacement Vikings. And Pro Bowl quarterback Tommy Kramer suffered through an injury-plagued season. But the Vikings responded by meeting each challenge head on. In a season filled with pitfalls which could have spelled disaster for a lesser team, the Minnesota Vikings not only survived, they thrived and proved nothing could stop them from making a move. of a once promising season began when the regular Vikings returned from a month layoff to host a Monday night encounter with the Denver Broncos. Minnesota once again was off and running. While Darren Nelson handled the 72 yard marathon, the short sprints were left to rookie DJ Dozier, number 42, whose three scores helped clinch a 34-27 victory over the AFC champion. The Vikings' first-round draft pick in 1987, Dozier showed his versatility as he tied for the team lead with seven touchdowns. Dozier was just one among a talented crop of Viking rookies, a group that also included hard-running fullback Rick Finney, number 31. as well as starting defensive tackle Henry Thomas, number 97, who benefited from playing with one of the game's top pass rushers. If you took a prototype of what you were looking for as a defensive end, uh, it certainly would be Chris Dolman. He's 6'5 and a half, 260, probably runs about a 4'7", 40, has great uh, upper body uh, strength, uh, has great reactions. We look for great things out of Chris Dolman. After playing a year and a half at outside linebacker, the imposing Chris Dolman spent his first full season at defensive end, blazing a path of destruction through opposing backfields. The result, a team-high 11 sacks and six forced fumbles, along with his first Pro Bowl berth. Dolman quickly became a dominant figure among a new wave of purple people eaters which also included number 75, talented third-year tackle Keith Millar. Along with solid end Doug Martin, number 79. A special chemistry throughout the defense mixed the youthful hunger of linebacker Jesse Solomon with the veteran instincts of 11-year man Scott Studwell, who earned his first trip to the Pro Bowl. Going to his third straight Pro Bowl was ball hawking safety Joey Browner, number 47, who totaled a career high six interceptions while providing teammates with a take charge leadership throughout the season. While Browner provided leadership on defense, 
quarterback Wade Wilson stepped up to provide a new leadership on offense. The Viking attack didn't skip a beat. Wilson's ability to spark the offense was never more evident than against the Raiders. When he relieved Kramer in the second half and threw just two passes, both for touchdowns and a 31-20 victory. Wilson enjoyed his most productive season, thanks in part to a brilliant supporting cast, which included starting offensive lineman Tim Irwin, David Huffman, Kirk Loudermilk, Terry Tausch, Greg Cook, and number 65 Pro Bowl tackle Gary Zimmerman. Wilson also was blessed with two Pro Bowl receivers and sure-handed tight end Steve Jordan, along with the incomparable Anthony Carter. Carter was a purple and white speed demon and fire-breathing cleats. For opponents, he was the most bedeviling of problems. For the Vikings, a divine gift from above. I've said uh, that uh, if the good Lord ever put anybody on, on this earth to play football, he put Anthony Carter on this earth to play football, but the, he forgot to give him a body to go along with it. The 5'11", 175-pound Carter more than made up for his size. Way to go, Ace. He has deceptive speed, and that gives him great ability to run in the open field after he catches the ball. Carter emerged as one of the most exciting big play receivers in football. A deadly target for all three Viking quarterbacks. Along with Wade Wilson, the Vikings would look to number 16, rookie Rich Gannon, whose strong preseason showing served notice he is already a solid NFL passer. And of course there was Tommy Kramer, whose first touchdown pass of the season helped defeat Tampa Bay. All three quarterbacks played the following week against Atlanta, but the big hero was one of the smallest Vikings. Leo Lewis raced 78 yards for Minnesota's first punt return touchdown since 1968. The 24-13 victory was the Vikings' third straight win, and they looked to run the streak to four on Thanksgiving Day in Dallas. Kramer and Carter feasted on the Cowboys for two scores. But it wasn't until overtime that Darren Nelson provided the gravy for this holiday treat. Nelson's 24-yard score in sudden death clinched an exhilarating 44-38 victory, a triumph which had the 7-4 Vikings once again thinking of a trip to the playoffs. But heartfelt victory soon gave way to heartbreaking defeats, including a bitter last-minute loss to the division champion Bears. Three weeks later, Minnesota used two Alfred Anderson touchdowns to build a 10-point fourth-quarter lead against the NFC East champion Redskins. But the lead soon was melted away as Washington rallied to tie the score and eventually won in overtime 27-24. Despite that disappointing loss, the Vikings qualified for the playoffs with an 8-7 record. Still, the question remained, could this team rediscover its winning edge in the postseason? In the Vikings' first playoff appearance in five years, they were pitted against football's hottest team in the NFC wildcard game, and early results indicated the host Saints would win their 10th straight.
Just four plays into the game, New Orleans led 7-0. The Vikings had landed in the middle of a hornet's nest, surrounded by an entire city buzzing about its team's first winning season. But while the Vikings and their fans may have been outnumbered, they refused to be run out of town. Anthony Carter's incredible 84-yard punt return was the longest in NFL playoff history and sent an early message to the Saints. You may be the top act in town, but today, we're here to steal the show. The return gave Minnesota a 10-7 lead, and the Vikings never looked back. From miraculous receptions to Hail Marys, the Vikings could do no wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Hassan Jones' amazing touchdown catch came with no time remaining in the first half and built the Vikings' lead to 21 points. On a day that was supposed to be their own slice of heaven, the Saints didn't have a prayer. <laughs> Against the team with the best turnover ratio in football, the Viking defense recovered two fumbles and intercepted four passes and left the offense to mop up what was left of the Saints. Yeah. The Vikings had crashed New Orleans with their own private Mardi Gras. Yes, the Vikings. That was who could break the spell the Saints had held on the NFL. Many hadn't believed the Vikings to be a worthy playoff opponent, but any doubts that Minnesota belonged had now been put to rest. In that kind of strike games, we were eight and four, and heck, that's not backing in anywhere. You know, we're eight and four. You know, there were a, 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 two or three teams that had a better record than we did, but for the most part, we, we deserved to be here. It was a, a total team effort and a total team win, something that we haven't had in quite some time. Hopefully, uh, this can carry over in San Francisco. The next challenge was even greater. The 13 and 2 San Francisco 49ers, owners of the NFL's best offense and defense, and prohibitive favorites to win their third Super Bowl in the 80s. Go, Jerry! Give it to him, today, Jerry! Give it to him, big man! You're a big man, Jerry! Many believed the game would not be close, and they were right. But it was Minnesota, not San Francisco, that showed its muscle by dominating the line of scrimmage. A stifling Viking defense held the mighty 49ers down, while the Minnesota offense 
work to put them away fast. Wilson scoring passes to Carl Hilton and Hassan Jones were the only two touchdowns the Viking offense would need. The stunned San Francisco faithful watched helplessly as the underdog Vikings pulled the soggy candlestick turf out from under their 49ers. Rookie cornerback Reggie Rutland landed the biggest prize of his life and cradled his trophy 45 yards for the score that broke the 49ers' backs. While Rutland and the other Vikings beat the 49ers on field level, one player beat them by soaring high above it into a stratosphere all his own. The incredible Anthony Carter snatched 10 catches out of thin air for an NFL playoff record 227 yards. In a day filled with brilliant Viking performances, Carter's was the showstopper. Another NFL playoff record was set when kicker Chuck Nelson booted five field goals and went on to be perfect in the postseason. The Vikings had banded together to produce their biggest victory in more than a decade, one which many felt they could never pull off. How do you like this man? Yeah. The 36-24 triumph opened the eyes of the football world to the heart and character of these Minnesota Vikings, a team which had come further than any expected, and now was headed to its sixth NFC Championship game. This place will be rocking today from RFK Stadium, 55,000 on hand, and the Minnesota Vikings, a wild card team, tries to get to the Super Bowl at the expense of the Washington Redskins, the champions of the NFC East. This should be a dandy. After meeting in a thrilling regular season finale, the Vikings and Redskins made their rematch everything a championship game is supposed to be. For more than three periods, the Vikings stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the favored Redskins, battling to a 10-10 tie before Washington managed the go-ahead score. With just over five minutes remaining in the game, the Redskins held a 17-10 lead, and the determined Vikings prepared for a final drive toward a tying score.
56 seconds remained. Fourth down and four yards to go at the Washington six. The Vikings had one shot to stay alive. Minnesota came up just short in fulfilling the most unlikely of dreams. But this one loss to the eventual world champions hardly could paint a season filled with extraordinary achievement. The 1987 Minnesota Vikings were a team of electrifying flair and of resounding heart. They were a team that reached back to conquer each new obstacle the season provided. They were pride and strength. Above all, the Vikings proved to be winners and left no doubt they were making a move.